Pedro, back here. Hey, what's up? Big week for you. Opportunity knocked, and you answered the door after Henry Cejudo was injured. What has the build to this one been like heading into Saturday, getting ready to fight Marlon Vera? Oh, it's a lot of expectation going to the fight. Um, I felt great. My last fight against Greece, um, just got back in training right after my last fight. It was April, somewhere in the middle of April. I was training, and when I got a call from, from Sean to replace Cejudo six weeks in advantage, I felt there was plenty of time to, to, to get ready for, for Cheeto. This is obviously a, a big card, and not only that, it's a big card for the Bantamweight division with the title on the line in the main event. How much more important does it make a fight like this in your mind, knowing that you have a chance to set the table, so to speak, for the title fight? Yeah, all my fights speak for themselves. You know, it's really important to also showcase that I'm still here is strong. All my all my preview fights he spoke for himself, and this is not a different one. It's the the type of fight that it's gonna be a lot of eyes on us. Even though the better like that, right? It's gonna be a lot of eyes on us. It, it's a big card, um, a bantamweight title. It's gonna be display on that night, and. And I believe like an impressive victory over Cheeto is going to even push me forward uh, towards the goal. So let's see. Marlon's had a, a good run. He's coming off the, the tough loss to Corey Sanhagen. He hits really hard, super durable, much like yourself. Doesn't get finished really ever. This matchup just screams fun. It just screams a dogfight. Is that how you view this as well, that you two are just going to go in there and just kind of for sure. Out of each, off each other? For sure. Just like that. We have probably the same amount of fights in UFC. Um, we are like the most bent away fights that we have in the division. It's Marlon, my, it's Chiro, and myself. A uh, very durable guy. Never been, he never, I don't think he never um, been finishing one of his fights. So myself too, I never been knocked out or finishing none of my fights. Uh, we both like to go and exchange and, you know, and, and bring like some type of like a dog fight, which nowadays a lot of people try to, to fight and play more safe. Cheeto and I, we are like, don't give a fuck. We just go for war. A win here puts you in a, in a good spot. And if Sean O'Malley beats Aljamain Sterling, and even if he doesn't, you guys got in there last year, you and Sean, the eye poke happened after you had a really good first round and then there's some unfinished business there for sure. Is there a part of you that hopes Sean gets it done so that you can try to finish that business with the stakes as high as they could possibly be? Actually, a part of me, I want to fuck him up in a hotel. But the other part of me as a father, a husband, you know, and a believer say, no, don't do that. You're going to get it yourself some way. I'm kidding. So uh, it's definitely... <laughs> <laughs> We're professionals, you know. I know he does that too. Um, it is what it is, you know. I'm not the guy that I sell my my soul to the devil, you know, so I can get more followers, sponsor or money. Um, but you know, nobody's supposed to be like each other, and you know, he has his ways of doing things. I have my way of doing things, even though it's it's a fight that I'm looking forward to see it. Um, Sterling. Really good wrestling, grappling, uh, background, Sean Molly, long reach, precision, knockout power. So it's definitely a fight that it's it's going to be really good for the Bentley division. Who wins? I think Sterling. Thank you. Pedro, uh, hello, over here. Well, uh, you guys, he already said it in some kind of way. Is there... I mean, Cheetos probably the most similar fighter to you that you could have gotten. You're both very durable. You're both really hard hitters. Both of you have, have finished most of your fights before the final bell. You both won most of your fights, uh, not by decision, but either by knockout or by submission. Do you see this as being a fight that's going to give fireworks like since the beginning? Or have you planned anything different? Have you strategized differently in order to not give Cheeto the fight that he probably wants? The funny thing is, I, I always plan in my coaches, like, no, let's start like this, and then I do that, let's be more strategic. And then I ended up, you know, the bell rings, and then I just go for the bra. It's, um, I think it's more part of my spirit, you know, the warrior, the inside of me that likes to go there and get business done quick. 
um, even though you know some of my fights doesn't I don't get the finish we are in the organization that we're fighting the best fighters in the world but my strategy my main goal is always to finish my opponents no matter if it's a knockout or submission um, and I don't see this fight going in another direction I'm gonna just push the button press forward and try to get the finish considering Cheeto was a top four fighter not more than a few months ago and uh, you're of course replacing a top fighter himself in Henry Cejudo uh, what big how big of an opportunity is this for you to get in the spotlights you know it probably go up and rank a few a few uh, places especially considering that Aljo said this is probably his last fight at bantamweight and that's definitely going to shake uh, shake up the division yeah let's see so they they they, they need to fight first um, to see what's the what's gonna hold for the future in that division. Um, I'm focused only uh, on my on my on my next fight Saturday night. And what was it, what was your other question? Sorry. How big how big of an opportunity is this for you, considering you're fighting a guy who was top four? Oh, nothing? it's a great it's a great opportunity. You know, Sean contacted us six weeks prior. Um, I didn't even think twice. You know, it's a big big opportunity, a big fight, and that's what the type of fights that I like to be, you know, and, and I'm never gonna uh, walk away from a good fight. Thank you. Right. Pedro, I've got you left. Uh, you mentioned that you and Cheeto have both been top contenders in the division for a really long time. You guys haven't faced each other. How long has he been on your radar? Because I'm assuming you probably knew that this day was gonna come. 100%, 100%, Cheeto and I, we fought same card, many many times in brazil in vegas and la um and we have the similar style in some ways and a little bit different in other ways even though we were going to uh, winning a lot of fights and then lose some we were always next to each other on the rankings and then something that i i always thought that the possibility of us fighting would be big uh, his last fight, San Hagen, kind of dominated that fight. Uh, do you look at that fight at all and kind of have a maybe a blueprint or something that you want to follow, saying, "Hey, if I do the same thing, I'll win the same way." Yeah, I don't think it works in this way. It's not like a math formula that if we do the same thing that the other fighter did to be Cheeto, it's gonna work. I don't think MMA is like that. Every fight is different. Every minute in the fight is different. Say the hanger has a, a little bit different style than I do. Um, so I watch that fight. Something that I, I, I don't watch in many of my my opponent's fights, but that was one of the fights that I, I wanted to see it just as a curiosity. Right, and my last question is, we already mentioned the main event, is in your weight class, where things have happened before, where things happened the week of the fight. Any chance you purposely weigh in at 135 in case something weird happens? I could, you know, I don't, I don't see that happening. You know, Cheeto is a professional guy. He always, we always make weight. Um, I was thinking more of something happens in the main event. I'm a professional, and you know, if UFC say, oh, something here and change, and we have to to adapt, I will be able to adapt and to do whatever, do whatever it takes. Good luck to you. Thank you. Pedro right here. I just Obviously, you had the fight with Sean O'Malley, and it ended prematurely, unfortunately. But what were some of your biggest takeaways, I guess, from his style, his fighting? Like, when you got in the cage with him, just what were your takeaways from what he can do in there? Besides his bitch-ass hand open all the time in front of my face, he's pretty good. Has a good length. Um, he was kind of, like, surprised the way that was pressing him and not getting hit. The leg kicks, the high kicks, the pressure. And I believe like I won the first round, second one, and I don't didn't see the scorecards, anything like that. But um, you know, besides all the the immature stuff that he does on the internet, he's a good fighter, you know, and and um, if I get the opportunity to fight him again, <clears throat> I don't see why not. And obviously, but from your fight to the Peter Yan fight, did you see him improve? Like, did you notice anything? Have you looked at that tape at all? Yeah, even though I thought that he lost that fight, he impressed me <clears throat> on his skills. He's uh, pretty tough and getting better every single fight. Thanks, Pedro.